Hello everyone, what is going on? I'm Gav from Master974 back again today doing a very special Valve source code tutorial. This is tutorial number 25 on the channel and as I see this as a special occasion, what I'm going to do is demonstrate how to not only add one nor two but three Half-Life 2 beta weapons into a Source 2013 single player mod. Now I do need to give a big ups and thank you to the PSP Secret, Twilight Bob, Dread Crafter, Timmy Smith, Bandit Boogaloo, Necto, and Anonymous Spurred Face. I probably butchered that, but I need to thank you guys for the suggestions of the weapons that I'm going to be going over in this video. And as you'll probably be able to tell, I had some nice After Effects action going there, which was actually something I did back in January, and a stock transition, which I'll probably use as well for the first time, but yeah. But actually no, before we get into the Combine Guard Gun, I'm just going to go over some basic preamble nonsense, which is something that's going to apply to all of the weapons that I'm going to be talking about. Now, any view models and world models that the Half-Life 2 beta weapons are going to be using, they can't just be copied and pasted over from the Half-Life 2 beta. Because you'll get a game crash because of a model version incompatibility issue, it's something that I've mentioned in a previous video which I'll show and card at this point so you can check that out if you really want to. And there's another video I've done which goes over how to import Half-Life 2 beta models more generally. So you can check those videos out to understand more about how to get the view models and world models from Half-Life 2 beta working in Source 2013. And something else you're going to need to get are the materials for the view models and the world models. So they're typically in a folder of their own. And in case you have any difficulty in figuring out where the materials folder is located, then you can actually open the .mdl file that you're interested in figuring out where the materials are in a text editor like Notepad. And then at the very bottom of the file, there are some tangible strings. And one of those is a folder or well, it's basically a path to a folder, which is where the materials are located. If you're ever unsure about where they are located, and you're also going to need weapon sounds, which are going to be in the sounds folder and typically in the weapons folder inside of a folder of their own. And also the weapon script, which needs to go inside of the scripts folder. Now, for some of the weapons, I'm going to be defining some custom sounds. And that needs to be defined in game sounds weapons.txt, which isn't typically provided by Source 2013 mods. So you do need to go to your Source 2013 single player or multiplayer distribution or install location, go to HL2 scripts, and then copy the game sounds weapons.txt file into your mod and then add in the sounds basically. And to make your life a bit easier during the testing phase, you can load up player.cpp, which is a file on the server project, and go to the cheat impulse commands section under case 101 and give named item of whatever the weapon is. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the Combine Guard Gun, the Immolator, and the Fire Extinguisher. All right, so now let's get into the actual Combine Guard Gun change. So the Combine Guard Gun already exists inside of Source 2013 because of the concussive blast entity that the Striders use when they do a heavy attack. However, the weapon code is disabled so basically you just want to change the hashtag if zero to hashtag if one or basically just remove the hashtag if zero and the corresponding hashtag end if lines to effectively re-enable the combine guard gun. And then there's going to be two errors for the same reason. It's regarding a vector called vec aiming and what I decided to do was to replace the line with a vector called vec aiming which equals p player arrow get auto aim vector of auto aim underscore two degrees. Now this value is completely arbitrary, you can use whatever you want. However, I believe the original line of get radial auto vector is somehow related to auto aiming and that's why I chose to use get auto aim vector to replace this line. Then inside of the item post frame function, you can uncomment the update lasers line so the beams draw properly. And inside of the primary attack function, you can uncomment the util screen shake line. So there's going to be a shake when you charge the weapon. And then because you need to have a client side version of this code, you need to go to C weapon stubs HL2 on the clients. And you want to add stub weapon class of weapon underscore C guard, then weapon C guard. 
and then C underscore base HL combat weapon, as you'll see in the video. And then you just need to get the weapon script, view model, world model, and sounds, and materials, and that's the preamble stuff I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And you can also follow a previous tutorial I've done about modifying the damage that the concussive blast entity does. So you can have a difference in damage between what the combine guard gun does and what the strider heavy attack does. Uh, however, if you are going to be using the weapon script from Half-Life 2 Beta, then I would advise you replace the ammunition type of AR2 underscore grenade with AR2 alt fire. And then inside of game sounds weapons text, you want to add, as you'll see in the video, weapon underscore combine guard dot single, then channel, chan weapon, volume 1.0, sound level of sound level underscore gunfire, pitch 9802, and then wave is weapons c guard c guard underscore fire dot wave. And you'll see this in the video. So you can test and yep, you'll get the combine guard gun working. And so that's pretty much all I really need to say about that. Let's go into the emulator now. This is a bit more interesting. So first off, you can add the emulator by right clicking inside of the server project and add an existing item. And you need to go to SRC game server HL2 and weapon emulator.cpp. Now there are going to be a couple of errors that I will outline soon that you need to fix for the weapon to compile properly. However, even with these basic fixes in place, the emulator is going to have some buggy functionality. So for example, it will be a sustained fire weapon even when the fire button isn't being held. There's no ammo subtraction upon use and the beams just don't do damage to entities or NPCs. So effectively what I'm going to do is outline how to add some more appropriate functionality for this weapon. Now here's something to keep in mind. During the making of this video, I actually experienced some unexpected problems and the emulator would fire bullets when it wasn't supposed to. And I used the same code from a test project that works perfectly fine and this issue happened and I don't know why. So basically, hopefully you don't end up firing bullets with the emulator by following this method. So the first thing that I decided to do was to change the primary attack line inside of the class definition. So you effectively remove the semicolon at the end and replace it with a set of curly braces. And then inside of the actual code where there's the primary attack function that gets expanded out, you just comment out everything so you don't even use the primary attack function, as you'll probably see in the video. So then you want to change the is emulating function to return is active instead of m underscore fl burn radius does not equal 0.0. .0. And then you want to add a ball called is active after int m underscore beam index. Then in the data desk, you want to add a define field of is active and a field boolean. And then you want to remove stop emulating from the constructor and add is active equals false. And then at the top of the start emulating function, you want to add is active equals true. Send weapon anim of act vm primary attack. And you also want to change the set think line to say set think and C weapon emulator colon colon update think, as you'll see in the video. And then inside of the stop emulating function, you want to add is active equals false, stop weapon sound of single, and send weapon anim of act vm idle. And then inside of the update function, you want to add vec aiming forward, right, and up after the vector vec src that's already defined, and also a q angle called angle. Then you want to change the if p owner and the else statement. So effectively, you say if exclamation mark p owner, and then the contents that are already in the else statement of the code. So I'll just read it out anyways. So it's if exclamation mark p owner, then a C based combat character called asterisk p owner, which equals get owner, then vec src equals p owner arrow weapon underscore shoot position, vec aiming equals m underscore vec emulator target minus vec src, and then vec to normalize of vec aiming. And then in the else statement, you want to add vec src equals p owner arrow weapon underscore shoot position, P owner arrow get vectors and then and forward and right and up. 
then VIC SRC plus equals forward multiplied by 8 plus right multiplied by 3 plus up multiplied by minus 2. And you'll see exactly, you know, what to do in the video. And then VIC aiming equals P owner arrow get auto aim vector of auto aim underscore 2 degrees. And then inside of the else statement of the if hit world function, then you want to add if m underscore fl burn radius is greater than 16 and tr.end pos minus tr.start pos inside the brackets, then dot length is less than or equal to m underscore f max range 1. Then you want to do clear multi damage, c take damage info of damage info, passing through inputs of this, this for the inflictor and the attacker respectively, and then two, and then damage burn. Then tr.m underscore p end arrow dispatch trace attack of damage info forward and tr and then apply multi damage and you'll see that in the video. Now the reason for the tr.n pos minus tr.start pos stuff is because of the dispatch trace attack function. Basically if you in the void and you fire the weapon then you're going to get a crash. So it's just to prevent that from happening by effectively limiting the range that damage of the beams does with the emulator. And then finally, inside of the if m underscore fl burn radius is greater than or equal to max burn radius, then you want to replace the stop emulating line with m underscore fl burn radius equals max burn radius. And then inside of the item post frame line above the base class colon colon item post frame line that already exists, you want to add a C base player called asterisk P player, which equals to base player and then get owner. And then if exclamation mark P player, then return. And then we're going to create a static ball called is currently firing, which equals false. And a static float called M underscore FL next attack time, which equals 0 0.0 F. And then if P player arrow get ammo count of M underscore I primary ammo type is less than or equal to zero, then we want to stop emulating. Then if is currently firing, we want weapon sound reload. Then is currently firing equals false and then return base class item post frame. Then if P player arrow M underscore N buttons and in attack and M underscore FL next primary attack is less than GP global's arrow cur time. Then if M underscore FL next attack time is less than GP global's arrow cur time, then P player arrow remove ammo of one M underscore I primary ammo type and then M underscore FL next attack time equals GP globals arrow cur time plus 0.25. Then if exclamation mark is emulating and exclamation mark is currently firing, then if P player arrow get ammo count of M underscore I primary ammo type is less than or equal to zero, then stop emulating, weapon sound reload. Is currently firing equals false and return base class item post frame. Then weapon sound single start emulating is currently firing equals true. Then if P player arrow M underscore AF button released and in attack, then if is currently firing, then weapon sound reload. M underscore FL next attack time equals zero. Stop emulating is currently firing equals false. And M underscore F on X primary attack equals GP Global's arrow cur time plus 0.5 F. Now there's a lot to digest and take in here, but the basic functionality is if we have zero or less ammo, then don't fire the weapon. And then if we are firing, then we want to make sure we play a sound one time. And also the next attack time is to handle ammo subtraction and the M underscore FL next primary attack stuff is to make it so the player doesn't spam the emulator and consume all the ammo really quickly. It's supposed to add a delay to wait before the next attack can happen. If the attack button is getting spammed, that is. And finally, inside of the emulation damage function, we want to take the C entity sphere query and P entity definition out of the for loop. So effectively, before the for loop, you have C entity sphere query called sphere and then VEC SRC and FL radius, and then for sphere, sphere dot get current entity, sphere dot next entity, and then leave the C base combat character called asterisk PBCC as it is, but then set P entity equals sphere dot get current entity after that. 
And that's everything on the server that needs to be done. So once these changes have been made and saved, go to C Weapon Stubs HL2 on the client and then add stub weapon class of weapon underscore emulator, weapon emulator and C underscore base HL combat weapon, as you'll see in the video. And now the emulator uses a custom ammo type, which is called gasoline, which isn't defined by the game. So you're going to get an error with that. So to make sure that this is recognized, you need to go to hl2gamerules.cpp and near the bottom of the file, there's the def.addammo type stuff. And you just want to add def.addammo type of gasoline inside of speech marks, then damage burn, trace and non, 0099000. And then you need to get the weapon script, view model, world model, materials and sounds in order for the weapon to function properly. Now, inside of the weapon emulator.txt file, at least if you're using the Half Life 2 beta version, then inside of the sound data section, you want to add reload weapon underscore emulator.reload. And I'll probably show that off in the video. And then inside of game sounds weapons.txt, you want to add weapon underscore emulator.single channel chan weapon volume 1.0 sound level sound level underscore gunfire then wave of weapons emulator plasma shoot dot wave and then weapon underscore emulator dot reload channel chan weapon volume 1.0 sound level sound level gunfire wave weapons emulator plasma stop dot wave as you'll see in the video and then you want to copy over the plasma shoot and plasma stop sounds over from the half-life 2 betas hl2 sound npc cremator folder and copy and paste them into your mod's sounds weapons emulator folder. So you can compile and test the emulator now and what you should find is that it does set fire to NPCs that are within range and it also will ignite explosive barrels and damage props like boxes and funk breakable glasses and stuff like that and once it hits the maximum burn radius then it just gets set equal to the maximum burn radius. It should have steady ammo subtraction and if you try to spam the attack button then it's not going to consume all the ammo really quickly so hopefully you find that useful and very helpful and so the last weapon i'm going to go over today in this special valve source code tutorial is the fire extinguisher now one thing i do need to go over is that apparently the old method for drawing particles on the client doesn't seem to work anymore and i don't know why but my speculation would be that it's because it's been depreciated and it's been replaced with the particle system editor. So effectively we can remove the extinguisher jet dependencies from the fire extinguisher and we can even handle decal drawing on the server. And for this tutorial what I'm going to do is use a fire extinguisher particle effect from the missing information mod. And that would need to go inside of your mods particles folder and add it to the particles manifest.txt file in order for it to be usable. So inside of the actual code of the fire extinguisher, which you need to add to the server project, uh, you want to comment out or remove hashtag include extinguisher jet.h and add hashtag include particle pass.h and hashtag include decals.h. Then inside of the fire extinguisher class definition, we want to add a float called m underscore fl next decal draw time and a ball called is active. And then you want to remove the c extinguisher jet called asterisk m underscore p jet line. And then inside of the data desk, you want to remove the define field of m underscore p jet and field class ptr and then replace it with define field of m underscore fl next decal draw time as a field time and define field is active as a field boolean. Then in the constructor you want to remove the m underscore p jet equals null line and replace it with is active equals false. Then inside a precache you want to add m underscore fl next decal draw time equals zero and precache particle system and the particle system name. So in my case it's fire underscore ex1 inside of speech marks. Now this is the name of the particle system to use, which as I mentioned earlier is one for missing information. However, it's not the name of the .pcf file, it's the name of the particle system that exists within the .pcf file for the particle that you're using. Then you want to go to the event killed function and change the setThinkLine to add 
and C base entity colon colon in front of the sub underscore remove line, as you'll probably see in the video. Then remove everything that is inside of the start jet function and replace it with is active equals true, C base player asterisk P player equals two base player get owner if exclamation mark P player return, and then dispatch particle effect of and in my case, fire underscore ex1, it's the particle system name that you're using. Then p attach point follow, p player arrow get view model, muzzle, and then false. So muzzle is the attachment point, and that's basically all you really need to worry about there. And then we want to go to the stop jet function, remove everything from there, and replace it with is active equals false. C base player asterisk p player equals two base player get owner if exclamation mark p player then return and then stop particle effects of p player arrow get view model. And then inside of the item post frame function you want to add a static float called m underscore fl next attack time equals 0.0f and then inside of the if p owner arrow get ammo count of m underscore i secondary ammo type is less than or equal to zero section you pretty much want to remove everything and replace it with if is active, then stop weapon sound of single, weapon sound special one, send weapon anim of act vm idle, then stop jet, stop particle effects of p owner arrow get view model, and then return. And then inside of the next section, which is if p owner arrow m underscore n buttons and in attack, you want to change the if statement to include a double ampersand m underscore fl next primary attack is less than gp global's arrow cur time and then above the if m underscore fl next primary attack is less than gp global's arrow cur time line you want to add a weapon sound single then if exclamation mark is active then send weapon anim of act vm primary attack and then p owner arrow set animation of player underscore attack one as you'll see in the video and then you want to replace the if m underscore fl next primary attack is less than gp global's arrow cur time section to if m underscore fl next attack time is less than gp global's arrow cur time then p owner arrow remove ammo of one and then m underscore i secondary ammo type and then m underscore fl next attack time equals gp global's arrow cur time plus extinguisher ammo rate and then after this, there's another if p owner arrow get ammo count of m underscore i secondary ammo type, which is less than or equal to zero line. And you want to replace everything inside of that if statement with if is active, stop weapon sound single, weapon sound special one, send weapon anim of act vm idle, then stop jet and then return. And then what you want to do is replace the v test pos line. So instead of fire extinguisher distance dot get int, use a stock number such as 8192. And then above the fire system extinguishing radius line, you want to add a vector called end, which equals tr dot end pos. And then a vector called difference, which equals end minus v muzzle pos. And then a float distance, which equals difference dot length. And then you want to contain everything from the fire system extinguishing radius to the last end debug overlay line inside of an if statement. That reads if distance is less than or equal to fire extinguisher distance dot get float. And then above the fire system extinguishing radius line, you want to add, and as you'll see in the video, if m underscore fl next decal draw time is less than gp global's arrow cur time. You want to create an int called index which equals decal system arrow get decal index for name of extinguish inside of speech marks. Then C broadcast recipient filter called filter. And obviously I need to make a comment here that this part would be trivial if the particles had constant speed. However, the missing information particle system that I'm using has some random velocity values and has some deceleration going on. So the decal drawing may not be perfect. So if the particle system has acceleration, but we don't know what the acceleration is, then we can use one of the SUVAT equations to basically figure out what the delay between the decal drawing time should be. And it's gonna be slightly different. It's actually gonna be two multiplied by our distance value divided by whatever the start speed is. However, that's more complicated shit than you need to worry about. So what I outline now should be fine. 
So we're going to create a float called speed and for the particle system that I'm using, it has a random speed between 210 and 275. So we can create a random float with the values 210 and 275 as you'll see in the video. Then we're going to create a float called delay and then this is just purely arbitrary values here but if distance is less than or equal to 95 then delay equals zero else delay equals distance divided by speed. You know, because speed equals distance divided by time. We just rearrange the equation a little bit. And then do TE arrow decal of filter, delay, and tr.endpos, and tr.startpos, tr.getEntityIndex, tr.hitbox, and then index. And then m underscore fl next decal draw time equals gp globals arrow cur time plus 0.05f. It's whatever delay you want between the decals firing. And finally, in the else stop jet section, you want to replace the else with if Piona arrow m underscore af button released and in attack, and then replace the contents with if is active, stop weapon sound single, weapon sound special one, send weapon anim of act vm idle, then m underscore fl next decal draw time equals zero, m underscore fl next attack time equals zero, M underscore FL next primary attack equals GP globals arrow curtain plus extinguisher ammo rate, stop jet, and weapon idle. Now, if you choose to use the fire extinguisher recharger, which is inside of the extinguisher code, then inside of the use function, you need to change the set think line to add a ampersand C extinguisher charger colon colon in front of the turn off part. And that's pretty much the only change you really need to make there. And because we need a client side version of the extinguisher code, because bearing in mind we're not using the extinguisher jet functionality or anything, we need to go to the client and inside of C weapon stubs HL2, you want to add stub weapon class of weapon underscore extinguisher, weapon extinguisher, and C underscore HL select fire machine gun for whatever reason that is. However, you may also want to add the extinguisher ammo type. So inside of HL2 game rules .cpp, inside of the def.add ammo type section, you actually just want to uncomment the line that defines the extinguisher ammo type. Now this will set a hard coded value of 100 for the maximum amount of extinguisher ammo the player can have. However, you can replace it with a convar if you want to. Uh, I won't cover how to do it in the video. You can check out one of my other weapon related videos to see how it can be done. And the same applies to the immolator as that would have a hard coded value of the gasoline ammo type being 99. And you can have that as a convar value as well if you want to. And that should allow you to compile the fire extinguisher code and allow you to use the fire extinguisher to put out fires. And you should see the effects and the decals drawing at basically not the zero. So hopefully that is satisfactory for you. And then you just need the weapon script, view model, world model sounds and all that stuff. And one thing you might need to do is modify the extinguish decal to be smaller because the decals might be quite large. So if this is something that you think you might need, then all you need to do is get the extinguish.vmt decal file. And then there's a dollar sign decal scale value. And you can just reduce that to something like 0.125. And then that should be satisfactory for the decal sizes in case it's too large. But yeah, functionality wise, you should be able to put out fires and decals get drawn uh, at a time, which is based off of the distance and the speed of the particles. So that is it for the video, everybody. I've been here for over half an hour doing the audio commentary and of course, screwing up in places as I always do. I know I've been putting off this audio commentary for a really long time. I apologize for that. I do need to get into a better frame of mind when it comes to doing these videos. But I do want to thank you all so very much for checking out this video and for leaving your suggestions for ideas. I know I've got a lot to get to. I never thought I'd make it to 25 tutorials when I started this series, but you know what? With you guys' support, hopefully we can get to 50 one day. One year maybe, I don't know. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Appreciate the comments and the feedback and the advice and the suggestions and all that good stuff. Like, comment, share, subscribe and all that good stuff if you want more. And I'll see you for whatever I decide to do next time. So take care out there everyone. Peace out. See you later and have a great day.